Today's plan was to take you to as many castles as possible in Aberdeenshire. Upon arriving to our first castle, New Slains, our day took a dramatic turn as we learned the dangers of this spot. Let us take you back to the beginning. Welcome to Scotland's castle country. We are currently in Aberdeenshire, which has the most castles per acre in all of Scotland. There's over 260 castles here. So let's see how many we can find today. This was the moment I knew something was wrong. Our day went from castle hopping to hectic rescue mission. There was a couple who arrived at the same time as us with a puppy who soon after had a massive fall down an 80 foot drop. We stayed to help with our camera, drone, and hopefully calm grounding presence. We caught much of this rescue mission on camera and got the okay from the owners to share the story with you. Get to know the brave first responders involved and a spunky puppy named Sparky. That barking and whimpering broke my heart. With high tides coming in, we definitely realized that things were about to get bad. So we started looking for a way to actually get down to Sparky. Yeah, I think pretty quickly the owners called for help. So they called search and rescue. Not being from the UK, we are probably gonna get parts of this wrong. But basically there is a Coast Guard in the UK Right, so Her Majesty's, or His Majesty's Coast Guard now, and they have a charity, which is the RNLI, the Royal National Lifeboat Institute, which is a charity that partners with His Majesty's Coast Guard. Here, from, from here you can see her. From here. Uh, and she's, uh, Does this happen a lot? Yeah. <laughs> Once they got here, they pretty much went straight to work and started making a plan to get to Sparky. It was pretty fascinating to watch them in action. More people coming through the building. So at this point, they had made a plan and it was like the perfect plan. And as they were making the plan, I was Sparky, looking wait. over and Sit. Sparky Go jumped and swam to the other side. Sparky. And it was literally one of those moments where it was like, I felt so like helpless. I was like, um, uh, everyone. <laughs> They decided to go ahead and lower a guy down to see if they could get Sparky to jump back into the water and come back over to him. He's almost there. Ten feet to go. Yeah. Just going for it. Trying to get her to come over. Swim across. I don't actually know how many minutes this went on. I feel like it felt like he was down there for like an hour and Sparky just, Sparky just wouldn't budge. So at some point during all of this, they put into place a plan B where they called in a boat and we're going to attempt a different sort of rescue mission. We didn't have a lot of details at this point. And then they started to send this guy up, which gave me major anxiety. I know you just have to trust <laughs> their process, but I was like, now no one's down there with Sparky. So they sent a dinghy from the main boat over and the plan was to do rescue by sea now. It was pretty nerve wracking watching this part because it was so rocky throughout this entire section. We're stuck. So close. And I feel like Sparky was getting more and more anxious, like the longer this went on and understandably so, she just started pacing more and more. Right there. 
We really were so impressed with their patience, and later we found out that everyone on this team were volunteers, so every single one of them devoted their entire Saturday to rescuing Sparky and getting her back to her owners. trying absolutely everything they could, we were once again in a waiting game. There were two options at this point. They could bring Sparky back to the main boat and it would be over an hour's drive for the owners to reconnect with Sparky. The other option was to place Sparky in this red bag and bring her back up cliffside, which provided a faster reunion with the owners. And seeing as it was a long traumatic day, this felt like the better option. So you might be wondering how this even managed to happen in the first place. Well, Sparky ran off over to the left there and lost her footing. And as you heard earlier, this is a really common occurrence in this location. And as we walked through the castle, we could see why. Not only are there no fences around the edges, but it truly looks like the land is connected. It's really hard to see a drop off at all until you get right up to the edge. And in the UK, it's quite common for dogs to be off of their lead, much more so than it is in the US. So this really did feel like one of those moments of someone doing the best they could with what they had. An honest mistake that could have happened to anyone. In the end, it was truly incredible to see how many people rallied together to support the rescue of Sparky. We've since talked to Sparky's owners and she's doing great and as adventurous as ever. We're hoping to catch up with Sparky and her family again soon. Until then, stay safe on your adventures and we'll see you next time. <laughs>